everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to another sewing vlog. If you've seen my last vlog, you'll know that I am just finishing up my 19 teens dress based originally on the Butterick 6093 pattern. And I was hoping, today's a pretty nice cool day outside, so I was hoping to go and take pictures of it. I still have just a tiny little bit of stuff that I need to do, uh, but one of those involves putting on the dress. So I have to put on the dress, decide what I want the belt to look like, because yesterday I made the belt for the most part, I didn't quite finish it, and then I decided I'm not sure if I actually like the belt. So I have to finish that up. I also still have to put those five snaps on the neckline insert. And the other thing that I realized was I think I need a hat because this is one of my two Edwardian hats and I was thinking that it is blue and therefore it will not clash, it will be okay to go with the dress. You can see this hat here. I love it. It's gorgeous. I made this all the way back in 2011 for my very first Edwardian event and I freaking love this hat. But honestly, it doesn't go. Just as an example, here's the fabric. Here is this hat. And it's just like, because it's close-ish, it makes it more clashy, I think. So I need a new hat. So I decided I would make the world's quickest, dirtiest hat. And to do that, I am taking my last straw base. I clearly need to go back to the thrift store and hopefully find more straw bases. So I'm taking my last straw base that I have. And what I'm doing, I'm making like a poof style hat. I don't know if there's a technical term, but what I'm doing is I have cotton batting that I'm putting on the outside of the hat. I am going to put some dots of hot glue to just kind of hold this all in place. And then I measured the distance around the dome of the hat with a little extra ease for floof and also a half inch seam allowance on each side and that came out to 18 inches so I cut an 18 inch circle of my fabric because I'm one of those people who just winds up doing matchy matchy hats all the time and oh well so I cut an 18 inch circle of the fabric of the dress and that circle is I've now run a gathering stitch around the outside and that circle is going to be pulled up, gathered, and then put over the batting on the hat after I've glued a bit of the batting. I am probably just gonna glue this whole hat because again, I want this to be super quick. And so once I gather it up, I'm going to turn under the edges, glue around that, and then add decoration. Uh, the other thing that I'm probably going to do is this hat is just a little flat. You can see that shape. So I am probably going to attempt to steam this and set it in place and see how long uh, or how much of a set I can get on this hat just in the duration of me doing those snaps and like doing my hair and stuff. So um, we shall see. But yeah, I figured this should be just a super quick project that I can do and hopefully still get outside before I think the sun's supposed to come out later. So I wanna get out before the sun comes out later because uh, pro tip for pictures, it's so much better to take pictures when it's not sunny out. You're, it just messes with your lighting so much. So right now with the nice overcast sky we have, that is gonna make for way better light. So that's my goal. I don't know if I'll really like film the making of this hat, but if I do, I will pop that up next and otherwise I will show you the hat when it's finished. First, I'm laying hot glue in a kind of loose zigzag pattern around the crown of the hat and smoothing the cotton batting over the top of the glue. I go around the entire crown and even do a little bit at the top of the crown. Then I gather up the circular poof pattern piece using my two gathering stitches. Then I fit the gathered up poof over the top of the crown of the hat, being careful not to move any of the cotton batting out of its place. I tucked the gathered up edge underneath the poof so that no raw edges were visible and then proceeded to glue this in place around the entire crown of the hat. Then I steamed the brim into place. Sorry for the terrible cutoff angle on this, but what I was doing was using my iron on a steam setting 
and blasting the brim of the hat with steam, then shaping it by hand to curve the brim down. This involves both pulling the brim down and also pushing the ends of the brim together in order to get the braid to actually be a tighter braid of the straw. As you can see, the mushroom dome part has now been attached and I have also bent down the brim, which I forgot that with this method it's all hand done. Like I can't just put it in a form because I need it to basically get smaller. I need the straw to get smaller and tighter for the bottom of the brim. And so I have to do all of that hand shaping. So, but anyway, it's done now. I just need to figure out how to trim it. I finished the hat. I wound up going for a very simple look with just this bow on the side. This bow is actually fabric that is left over from a tablecloth that I bought when I first moved into this house. The tablecloth I got from the thrift store was too big for my table so I cut off the excess and have been saving it for like four and a half years for some odd reason. And apparently this is the reason. So um, I'm happy that it's come in handy. It is, I'm pretty sure, polyester, maybe a poly cotton blend, but I think it's polyester. And all I did was I cut a strip of it, which is, I didn't even measure the width. I was like, oh, I wanted to be three and a half stripes wide. So I cut a strip of it. It already had the hem on one end from when the original tablecloth and then I hemmed up the other side and the other end end though I then wound up cutting off that end it was a little too long I think I cut it to about 65 or 70 inches total because I knew I wanted enough for the bow the bow wound up being actually just a little bit too big so I cut off the excess and used that excess to be the center of the bow and the bow is just again the one strip of fabric uh, it starts and ends over here, which is the side of the hat. See, there's the back. So that is like kind of the front side where the bow is. And I have just crunched it up to gather it <laughs> in the center of the bow and glued it all in place with hot glue. And then I had pinned it while I crunched it so I knew it would stay. And then I put glue in and removed the pins as I went uh, and then wrapped the little center bit around it and it doesn't go all the way it's just like three quarters of a wrap and glued that in place and then the center of the bow is glued to the straw of the hat there's also glue in the back of the center of the bow that attaches it to the turquoise and then there's four glue tacks uh, on the bow one here one here and then same on this side, one here, one here down to the straw. So that way it will always stay nice and puffed. And then I did tack the uh, whole bow band in one other place, which was just on the exact opposite side of the hat. I did a little tack right here and a little tack right here to the brim. So hopefully that will make it all stay in place. But I'm very happy with how it looks. I think it's got a really nice simplicity to it, which is what I was going for. And it kind of follows the simplicity of the dress as well. And I don't think I'm going to add anything else to it, honestly. I mean, it's a, such a nice, simple dress that I think this really just finishes the look. And now for a little backyard photo shoot. I was so excited to go outside and take pictures of everything all done up all together that I forgot to tell you 
that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> so surprise. But anyway, now that project is completely done. So yay! So now that that's all done and dusted, I am super excited to announce that I'm starting a new project because me. And, you know, I haven't finished Elsa, but I want a new project. And that project is that I've been really inspired by, uh, recently by a video by Nina Nella, and I think several months ago I was originally inspired by a video by Sostein to make a bootstrap form, the dress form. So bootstrap does custom dress form patterns. You basically put in all sorts of measurements and it spits out a dress form pattern at you that's custom to your size. So I've been thinking about it since I first saw Sostein's video about it and then Nina Nilla's video a couple weeks ago sealed the deal and I bought the pattern the same day. And I, now that I've finished the teens dress, I am excited to go ahead and get started on the bootstrap form. So last night I started laying out my pattern pieces on my fabric. I'm just using an unbleached canvas as my fabric. I didn't want to have to worry about interfacing it. And I figured that canvas seems like it's sturdy enough that I won't have to interface it. So hopefully. Um, and I wanted something that wouldn't feel obtrusive in the room so I didn't want anything with dark colors I didn't want anything with loud patterns I was ideally hoping to find some sort of a like a white on white type pattern canvas but alas my Joann's did not have that so I just went for the unbleached canvas look which is actually the same exact fabric as my cutting table is made out of that dirty thing that you see in the background all the time so hopefully this won't get so dirty but uh, I've gone ahead and I've drawn out several of the pattern pieces onto my fabric and now I'm going to go ahead and cut those out and then draw on the rest of them. That's what was easy to reach and would fit on my table well. So I think I've got like six of them drawn on already and uh, just pretty much small ones left. So better get to cutting. that Edwardian hat this week because otherwise I feel like you guys would be getting no content at all. It is now Saturday evening because that seems to come along so quickly and although I have finished cutting out the bootstrap form I so far haven't made any other progress on it. So it is about six o'clock now and I am going to get to work on the bootstrap form and see just how much I can finish before the end of this evening since that will be the end of this vlog. That said, I would actually really love to hear from you guys on whether you want me to keep doing weekly vlogs as is my original plan. I know I did skip the week for co-COVID but otherwise I've been doing weekly or if when I just am not doing a ton of sewing in a week, if you'd rather that I do bi-weekly vlogs instead of shorter weekly vlogs. So please leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on whether you'd prefer the shorter weekly vlogs or slightly longer, slightly more content bi-weekly vlogs. Let me know. Although I haven't been sewing this week though, I have actually been doing a lot of thrifting. I have bought I think close to $100 worth of stuff at the thrift store. So I'm also perfectly happy to share my thrift hauls if that's something that you guys are interested in. I tend to go for either things that I can sew with. For example, I've gotten two lengths of fabric to make skirts out of and so those will be future projects and I also do a lot of vintage inspired type thrifting. So for example, today's outfit is a vintage inspired outfit and I'm wearing it because I just bought this blouse on Thursday at the thrift store and it was such a cute little like 50s style sweater that I needed to put together a cute outfit for today. So yeah let me know if a thrift store vintage inspired type wardrobe haul would be interesting to you for me adding into these vlogs. So I know that you can't really like put on the bootstrap form or anything but how funny does this look? It's only been a couple of hours, I think, since I got started. I guess maybe it's been close to three hours now since the last time I talked to you guys. Um, but I have basically assembled like 
the body of the form. Um, so I know I'm sorry I know I didn't show you any of the actual assembly but actually Nina Nella has a really fantastic video about this form so that is going to be linked down below as well as So Steen's video which is the original reason that I found out about this form a few months ago. So both of those I've linked them down below go check those out. But this is my form so far so I just have to do up the back seam and like add the neck and do the shoulders and the collar and yeah so I've got some more stuff to do but it's basically just sealing it up at this point the bulk of this has been uh, assembled so that's pretty fun I will come back to you probably one more time tonight just to show you where I end the night I do not expect to finish this form tonight and even if I did finish it I don't have the pipe type situation that I need to put over my stand because I'm gonna be putting this on for now, I'm going to be putting this on the stand that my small dress form sits on since I really only use that for commissions and like if I get an extant bodice that actually fits on that. Um, so I'm just going to steal the stand from that for now and put that like in the garage or the closet or somewhere else because I don't have room for more than two dress forms in this sewing room. Um, but I don't have the pipe that I will need to be able to fit this onto that. And actually, I don't have the stuffing either. I ordered it from Joann's. It's there waiting for me, but I didn't pick it up today. So I should probably go do that tomorrow so that I can maybe finish this project for the next vlog. Anyway, I'm going to keep sewing. It is about 9 o'clock. Yeah. And I will come back to you at least one more time tonight with a hopefully finished body of the dress form. All right, so I think I am done with my sewing for today, but I am also racked with guilt now because I realized that I totally missed walking Lion today. I was gone running errands for much of the day earlier, and then I started working on the bootstrap form and got so sucked into it that I didn't notice when it got dark. I was supposed to walk him at dusk and I feel really bad because I walk him almost every single day we go two miles so now I'm just torn with guilt but on the flip side of that um, it's almost finished as far as like the actual sewing part goes I have one of the arm size like the little cover for it pinned into place the other one still needs to be put in but the neck is totally done it's totally seamed up the back so it is nearly complete and I think it's got some structural things that go inside of it that hold the like the pole casing in place so that will all come later but that probably won't be until Monday or so because I plan to spend most of tomorrow editing and staying out of the hottest room in the house because it's supposed to be 99 degrees tomorrow and I'm going to melt so I won't be doing any sewing but anyway I'm pleased with how this is looking so far. It's definitely looking like a dress form. So I think that's a good sign. Hopefully it will be a dress form that is me. And I will come back to you in my next vlog with finishing the bootstrap form. So I do hope you enjoyed today's video and that it was at least entertaining to you. Probably not very helpful unless you're making an Edwardian hat. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos on YouTube twice a week with regular releases on Friday and my vlogs on Tuesday. But I post over on Instagram every Every day, so please go follow me over on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you would like to support me and all the work that I do on this channel, the link to my coffee account is down below. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful week and happy sewing!